For many people around the world, when they hear the name Gibson guitar, they'll think Les Paul, SG, Futura? Okay, maybe not that last one, but for actually a lot of people around the world, when they hear Gibson guitar, they'll think G45, LOO, G200. Arguably, the Gibson Acoustic Klein or the Montana Range are as iconic as their electric counterparts, with probably just as many iconic names around the world using them in the studio or on stage. We're going to take a look at four of the current guitars in the Gibson Montana Range and see what makes them so unique, what makes them different to each other, and of course, what makes them so iconic. We split this video up into chapters as well, so if there's a particular guitar that you do want to see or hear, just check down below. And also, for those who like a little bit of reading, this video was actually inspired by a blog that is on our website that's going to be linked down below also. Starting with maybe the most recognisable and actually my personal favourite, but in all honesty, that might change by the end of this video. This is the SJ200. The SJ200 being physically the biggest in the Gibson Montana line, SJ actually standing for Super Jumbo, so that's super easy to remember. <laughs> Originally released in 1937 and played by the likes of Elvis, Bob Dylan, and Noel Gallagher, just to name a few. The most notable feature of the J200, obviously other than its larger size compared to the others, which of course will help with the natural amplification of the guitar, is actually the wood choice that goes into this big boy. Going against the more traditional wood choice, which we'll touch upon later, or going against the grain. The J200 uses a Sitka spruce top and a flame maple back and sides. This gives the guitar a really nice top end as well as the obvious boominess you're going to get from the larger body. Looks wise, the J200's signature appointments are the moustache bridge, the crown inlays on the fretboard and on the headstock and of course the super ornate pick guard there, it just looks absolutely chef's kiss. Another incredibly recognisable name played by the likes of Keith Richards, Tom York and Gillian Welch, just to name a few. The Hummingbird is our first but not our last dreadnought that we're going to look at. This is the most used acoustic shape in the industry and is the acoustic that anybody thinks of when they close their eyes and think of an acoustic guitar. The Hummingbird is what's known as a square shoulder dreadnought, which is just due to these bits being really squared off, it's quite easy to remember, and it strikes the perfect balance between projection and detail. Unlike the J200, the Hummingbird actually goes for the more traditional Sitka spruce top and mahogany back and sides, giving it an incredibly balanced tone, kind of whatever you're doing on it. While we're at it, it is worth talking about the other bird in the Montana line, and that being the dove. Sharing some similarities with the hummingbird, like the split parallelogram inlays, and of course the ornate pick guard with the hummingbird having a hummingbird and the dove having a dove, of course. The main difference being the wood choice on the Dove with it actually having a bit in common with the J200 with a flame maple back and sides with the Sitka spruce top. The scale length is actually slightly different on the two of them as well. With the Hummingbird going for the more Les Paul 24.75 inches and actually the Dove having a 25.5 inch scale length which will give them kind of slightly different feels too.
the other notable dreadnought in the Montana family and a total fan favourite is the more stripped down G45. Fun fact, the 45 actually references the price these were when they were first launched and that's actually the same for the J200 as well with the J45 being $45 and the J200 being $200. Now safe to say they're not the prices anymore but if you do find one at that price snap it up. Otherwise, we've got the same as the Hummingbird with the Sitka Spruce top and the Mahogany back and sides. The most notable difference though with this Dreadnought shape is actually the sloped shoulders here as opposed to the square shoulders of the Hummingbird. Now looks wise, this obviously makes the guitar look different and it actually kind of sits on your body a little bit different too, but sound wise, it's actually gonna take away a little bit of the top end of the guitar, so it kind of suits finger picking and strumming, you know, both really, really well. If you listen to the differences in this here, I think you'll know what I mean. This particular guitar is the 50s J45. Now there is a few models available in the other lines in the 50s or the 60s. While being similar to the standard range, they are kind of going for more of a vintage sort of vibe with you know the old school tuners there, slightly bigger guards and actually a thicker neck for anyone who may like that. Last but by no means least, we have the smallest of the family in the form of the L00, not the Lou. <laughs> Considered by most to be a parlor guitar, these models actually date back to the 1930s and have got a considerably different sound to their larger siblings, especially when finger picked, which check this out. It uses the same wood as the J45 with six spruce and mahogany back and sides and actually shares the same scale length as the J45 and the Hummingbird 2 with 24.75 inches which you may be surprised to hear on a smaller guitar. I wanted to highlight the studio range with this particular guitar too because if you're familiar with Gibson's line they have a more stripped back version of their electrics called the studio range which is exactly the same with the acoustics. The most notable differences being kind of obviously the more stripped down look, the difference in pickups between the standard and the studio line with Fishman's in the studio and LR bags in the standard and some different neck shapes across the board. It's worth mentioning as well that Gibson use scalloped X bracing across all of their guitars if that's something that you would like to know. Hopefully the Gibson Acoustic family is just a little bit clearer to you now and it's always worth mentioning more than spec sometimes it's really important to get these guitars actually in your hands. It feels, you know, the most important thing when it comes to guitars half the time. But what do you think? What's your favourite Gibson Acoustic? Let us know down in the comments below and while you're there obviously give us a like and a subscribe. Every like I'll play one G chord on every single one of these guitars. But until next time I've been Kieran. Have a great day.